<laughs> Hi, uh, this is Ginger Snap, a conversation and a cookie with a creative Maynard, and I am Lisa Redfern, and this is Kate Nicholson, and she is, we're in her home in West Bath, um, and she's primarily a massage therapist, but she does all kinds of things uh, here in Maine, and I'm going to let her tell you about all the things she does. I met her because you were giving a talk and a presentation on... Um, Essential oils. I love essential oils. Um, and so that's how we met. Yeah. And uh, so I'm going to let her talk about what she's up to. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Lisa. You're welcome. It's fun to be here. So I moved to Maine about seven or eight years ago. And I can tell you a little bit more of the story. It's a follow up question. But basically, I stand on my work as massage therapy. And I'm a licensed massage therapy. I primarily work in Brunswick. So I serve the whole Midcoast Maine area. I know back mm -hmm. Brunswick, Freeport, people kind of come from all directions. Mm -hmm. um, but I do that as my primary, like, what do I do? I'm a massage therapist. Mm -hmm. But like you and like many Mainers, I also do mm -hmm. about 12 other things <laughs> behind that. So it kind of feels right. like what hat or what shingle I want to put out right. in this moment or this season. Um, so I've been standing on massage primarily for a while, but I also mm -hmm. teach um, couple different yoga classes for right. several years now so I have some nice student bodies that kind of follow me around I love them um, and then they spill onto the massage table so it's really neat I feel like I get to <laughs> that's very visual no <laughs> uh, yeah I'm my hands um, so I feel like I get to know people through multiple um, sort of relationships yep. and it really gets rich that way right mm -hmm. so I know somebody in the yoga studio and they kind of come to the mat together and maybe they've been on my mat with me for like Four years and then they come mm -hmm. to the studio or the massage studio mm -hmm. and um, and we can really see what shows up in the body and like you really oh, get yeah. a bigger context for people and what's going on so mm -hmm. I really appreciate how they often feed each other I also am an essential oil educator something that I love mm -hmm. to bring in is um, flirting with and then growing my toolbox for natural healing solutions whether it's mm -hmm. just my own home you know natural healing non-toxic kind of products and mm -hmm. go to um, solutions for things that show up like a stain or my kids vomiting at three in the morning like I have something <laughs> I can reach for at three in the morning um so I like deepening that and I just mm -hmm. feel like something I love learning about I always mm -hmm. like having something to study and kind of geek out um so we'll get to that in the book <laughs> the book question what's your favorite smell oh, oh okay pick up your smell or three. like oil <laughs> oh essential smell. oil essential oil yeah what's oh. your um uh, I'm I'm not going to give you a great straight answer because it's, you don't have to. I'm so it's so moody like I'm really yeah, moody yeah. and it just depends on my mood and it depends on what I'm you know I I kind of am at the whim of like the weather and like how right. are you doing well yeah. kind of is it raining out or is it winter or is it like a beautiful summer day it just informs me so much so I feel the same way about what I need whether mm -hmm. I'm waking up or I'm trying to calm and go to bed mm -hmm. um, but I think lavender never gets never old <laughs> it never gets old but yeah, I really like how it changes with different oils yeah you know mm -hmm. depending on what you mix it with it really can go in lots of different directions so mm -hmm. it keeps it interesting mm -hmm. okay I'm gonna go back to smell for a second because that's a different thing yeah do you, have a thing. Couple, <laughs> do, you, do you have a couple favorite smells in the world in life <laughs> Okay. I didn't tell you. No, I'm you laughing. didn't. I didn't, okay. I didn't know I was going to. <laughs> well, I'm laughing because I'm actually thinking of a smell that I can't smell anymore, but um, the opposite of my, my biggest aversion to a smell, but that's not what you asked. <laughs> well, you can. So it's another story. You, you can take it another direction. <laughs> well, when I was getting ready, I was starting like the preliminary phases of being in labor um, with my second daughter, and my husband had stopped for lunch. Because we were uh -huh. like, oh, I think this is the day. I don't know uh -huh. what. And uh, he had lunch, and then we went to the um, hospital that evening. And I was in labor. I was having a child. And it gets really, everything gets really intense, obviously. But, like, even sounds and smells are just, mm -hmm. they really have to be, like, what you want. Or you need to get them out. And unfortunately, my husband had had a pulled pork sandwich. And then... <laughs> I know pulled pork today for lunch. Yeah, I so know, like these lovely essential oils. But when I think of smell, like the strongest <laughs> memory I have, I have to think of a strong, impressionable memory of smell. It was actually one that like I cannot smell to this day and not have like a visceral like, aversion to it. <laughs> that's Maybe really that's why funny. I need my oils so much, mm -hmm. just to like bathe me in things that make me happy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I yeah. can see that. Well, okay. Well, when this is over with, I'll tell you my why I don't like roses smell. Um, yeah. So you answered the question about when you first came to Maine. Do you know your first word? 
Okay, so I actually had to shoot a text to my mom good, to get this lot. <laughs> I was like, I think I know what it is. And I was actually really excited I was right. Um, well, mom, she claims. I don't know yeah. if that's true or not, mom. And then the other one is um, cracker. cracker. So, but I think it was more like cracker, cacker, cracker uh -huh. or something. And um, I, know, I know from story that I was obsessed with them. And in fact, I almost... <laughs> Had a moment today where I was going to show you crackers and not cookies uh -huh. um, in honor of that, but um, I don't think either of us want a cracker today more than we want a cookie, uh -uh. so we just want make a cookie, cut. not a cracker. <laughs> <laughs> so my first word was cookie, which is why one of the reasons I love cookies. So Kate made us cookies. Molasses cookies or ginger? They're ginger snacks. Well, they have, I don't know, they're both. Okay. They can be ginger molasses. Like all right, that. we're going to... Are we going to do it now? Oh, yeah. I've been waiting all day. Oh, they smell good. Oh. We were the first person who's ever made cookies for me. Really? Yeah. Yeah. 58 mm. episodes and no one's cooked for you yet? 58 episodes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're good, right? They're really good. Mm -hmm. I was excited. I found a good recipe, mm -hmm. so I wanted mm -hmm. to share it. Mm. Really good. Mm. Sorry out there in ether land. You can't have this. We just sit here and mm -hmm. eat, eat the cookie for a while. Okay, but I'm going to ask you to think about this next question. <laughs> Did you have a car as a kid that was really, really cool? Okay, but if you could get back, you would. I actually like this story. I don't know if I'm going to be able to relate it as well as it is actually a funny story. Um, so I didn't have a car. I grew up in Bangor, and I never had a car or vehicle, um, despite jobs. And I mean, I was a working kid. Um, I don't know how I got around so much. I don't. <laughs> I had just like bummed rides all the time. So I went to school out in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. so Get me out of Maine for a while, but I came back. So I love you, <laughs> Maine. <laughs> But I did need to leave to come back. I needed to leave to come back. And I went to school outside of Philadelphia. And it wasn't until my junior year in college that I saw, you know, I was like work-study kid. I was, mm -hmm. So there's a, a flyer somewhere around campus for like this $1,500 Honda Civic. It was this white little old school Honda Civic, like just kind of a tin can. But and for me, it was a Honda, so it was like dependable. Oh, yeah. I was like, okay, I can do this. Condos are rocks. They're great. Yeah. Except mm -hmm. that as we were finding out, I don't remember exactly how it transpired, but we discovered that it was somebody trying to resell a car that he was trying to buy really cheaply. So there's this, like, really shady guy in the middle of it. And then there's this sweet little Christian couple who we discovered, um, and she found out that he was trying to dupe her a little bit. They were like kind of selling it to him mm. as like a do good, hey, you're down and out. We can help you out. We'll sell you our car. Oh, this older no. couple. And then he was trying to make a quick buck by selling it for three times as much as they were. And so then they like, oh, get him out of here. We'll give it to you for $500. And oh, off yeah. I drove with my car. And so we named it after the shady guy, Liddell. <laughs> so I, had, I was driving Liddell for... Liddell. <laughs> that's hilarious. It's not great for about three years. Mm -hmm. And then that's as much as I got out of Liddell. Nice. Nice. All right. Are you a reader? Do you love to read? I would like to say yes. <laughs> but as you, you can imagine, yes. I'm one of those people that... Right now, books serve a primary purpose of falling asleep. Mm -hmm. So I do like a good book with good characters, mm -hmm. and one and what I do is I alternate books from a book that I need a storyline, I need to just go away mm -hmm. and get caught up in a story and mm -hmm. get some really good characters, and then I switch to a book that um, I find, uh, I don't know, scholarly is a very good word for what I'm talking about, but something I'm learning from, stimulating. right? Stimulating, stimulating. Yeah. I'm learning, I'm a little bit, and I got my highlighter, and I'm like mm -hmm. reading something really interesting. Um, for my work, right? Mm -hmm. Something that yeah. I just like really wanted to get my hands on for yeah. material. Um, so a book that I really liked recently, it's not mm -hmm. like a profound, I don't know, uh, impression, you know, an uh, impressive book to title, but it was a really great Jodi Picoult book that I actually mm -hmm. picked up at Christmas time. It's her latest one out. I think it's like um, Great Small Things. Mm. Uh, maybe you watch that title. <laughs> but it was great. It was all about race relations and um, mm. it was really actually turns out to be very timely in terms of like political climate and things. So um, it was really fascinating actually. Mm. I really liked it. So I recommend that one. And then I also read, um, I was trying to think since I work with massage therapy yep. and women's health, I actually work exclusively with women. Um, and so that's sort of a niche that's grown over time. And um, there's a cool story there, but maybe for another day. <clears throat> So my two favorite resources mm -hmm. for women's health that I loved, I would say if I had to choose one, it's this one. Balance Your Hormones, Balance Your Life by Dr. Claudia Welch. Mm -hmm. So a little shout out, a little promo for you, Dr. Mm -hmm. Claudia, um, who's a wonderful doctor in Vermont. 
And um, it gives women's health and it breaks it down by like symptom or situation, whether mm -hmm. it's menopause or menstrual health, pregnancy, um, different stages of a woman's life mm -hmm. through the lens of Ayurveda, which is an ancient Indian health system, mm -hmm. Chinese medicine, and Western science. And it says, well, if you have, you know, um, a ha excessively heavy cycle, sorry, women's health, um, <laughs> then this is how Ayurveda would read it. This uh -huh. is how Chinese medicine would read it, and this mm -hmm. is how you might, your typical average, you know, allopathic mm -hmm. doctor might read mm -hmm. that situation. Mm -hmm. And wow. I know, it really texturizes what's going on in our bodies and mm -hmm. our health and, you know, situation to situation. So I find that really fascinating. That's a good one. <laughs> All right. Okay, okay, so thank you for that. Moving on to music, something near and dear to me. Is there an album? Or a song that comes oh. that, that comes <laughs> back to you. <laughs> I get it. You can just wing it. Uh, that you, okay. you know, you got it. Oh, no, <laughs> no, I don't have it. But um, if I get to wing it, I forgot you're gonna ask me about music. That's all right. <laughs> okay. Um, I like I like to dance. Mm. I like things that are upbeat. I like things that we kind of. I don't know. Um, I like to get lost in music. Yep. So, uh, and I'm raising two little girls, and they are just like little dancers, mm -hmm. and they just move around the house, and they move around the house really in their bodies. Yeah. And we almost always yeah. are playing music, actually. So, um, oh, that's uh, great. Yeah, our house is really full of music, but mm -hmm. it's just sort of music in the moment. It's music for the mood. It's not like mm -hmm. my husband might have a better answer for you in terms of like <laughs> what he really feels strong about. But I like your answer. Yeah. yeah. All right, Kate, if a movie was made about your life, what genre would it be, and who would star as you, or who do you think they'd cast as you? <laughs> <laughs> I there struggled with these no wrong answers. answers. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I was like, oh, I was thinking about this today. Um, I struggled with those, too. I was good with Cracker. That was a pretty <laughs> solid, straightforward mm -hmm. answer. So I tend to be somebody that really feels easy to be drawn towards the bright side or the optimistic side. So I feel like it would be a lighthearted movie. Um, and that's just sort of what my nervous system tends to be able to take on at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. um, I can get into a drama or something that feels really compelling, for sure. Mm -hmm. Like, I've seen some recent films. But um, otherwise, I just feel like life can be really heavy right now. And mm -hmm. just chasing little kids and trying to pull out yeah. work that I love can feel really um, effortful. So... To kind of find something easy at the end of the day is what I'm drawn to. Um, and then I also just feel like I like to, if I'm given a situation or a day, I tend to just lean into what is good about it, you know, and what is hopeful about it. Um, and that might sound a little cheesy, but I have to say it's very true about me. So um, something like that. It would be. It would be something light, something uh -huh. kind of funny. I'm pretty silly, maybe a little awkward. <laughs> Especially for the so. camera. <laughs> okay, who would star as you? What do you think? That and this is another really dorky answer because I feel like. Bring it on! Oh, yeah. oh, I don't like this question, <laughs> but I knew you were going to answer it. It's your script, okay? Um, uh, do you have any guesses? Hot spot. Hot spot. No, I'm in the hot seat. You know what? Someone just flashed in in my head, and I'm trying to think who who it is. So keep going. Back on you. <laughs> well, okay, people. I think in high school I tried to emulate this person, and um, it's not like something I'm bragging about right now, but Jennifer Aniston oh, yeah. has right, sort right. of a similar, <laughs> no, not even fair to say, <laughs> it's as close as I can get to Hollywood or recognize Who's the woman, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. I can always think of celebrities. So the woman, Elizabeth Perkins, Elizabeth Perkins, has anyone ever said you look like Elizabeth Perkins? No. Do you know who I mean? No, I'm going to look her up. No, she's, oh, she's really cute. She's, she was in, um, she was a girlfriend in Big with Tom Hanks. Oh. A million years ago. Okay. She, I mean, her hair is darker and, yeah. um, but she, oh, she right. has, she, you, yeah. you know, there's a difference, I think, between if, if you resemble someone that's that's sort of a separate thing, and then there's the yeah. there's the an essence that yeah. comes from someone. Yeah, and your yeah, you, you your essence reminds me mm -hmm. a little bit of her. I think oh. that's where I'm gonna. Yeah, I'll look her Sometimes up. I try and figure this out ahead of time, and then today I was like, no, I'm just gonna. I bet Kate has got it figured. I'm out. probably have it all figured <laughs> out. That's why. <what>, <laughs> Oh my gosh. All right. So if someone wants to get a hold of you to get a massage or to talk about 
Um, these healing modalities yeah. are to talk about essential oils. How do they, what's the best way to reach you? Yeah, there's probably two ways you can find me. Um, one is at my website, katenicholsonwellness.com. And the other one would be easy to find me on Facebook, mm -hmm. Kate Nicholson Wallace on Facebook. Okay, so it's winter, and winter's coming to a close, and it's been kind of a stressful winter, so you probably need a massage from Kate. I know, I could use one. Hint, hint. Anybody out there? My birthday's coming up. <laughs> um, okay, so this has been Ginger Snow, episode 58. I can't believe it. And this is Kate Nicholson. And again, we are at, in her home in West Bath. And um, I'm amazed. The birds were so loud when I first came in, and they've been really quiet. Yeah, they so, think you're cute. You wouldn't even know. There's a bird right there. All right. And if you'd like to know more about me, uh, my name's Lisa Redford, and <laughs> you can go to lisaredford.com and listen to clips of music or songs. If you're a creative mainer and uh, you want to be on the um, podcast, get in touch with me. Okay, signing off. Thank you, Katie. Yeah, thank Bye. You. This has been Ginger Snack.